we know that Mayo Clinic touts itself as an international leader in clinical care, and that's rightly so. Standing out in this is certainly a whole different story. Is another area business that made fortunes list for the seventh consecutive year. We don't have any word yet on uh, how serious that condition might be. Another roof collapse in the area is blamed on heavy snow tonight. They're moving on up. What's that song? Slowly but surely. Along with this rain, there is also a little bit of snow. Children are especially vulnerable to the virus. He is behind bars after an early evening confrontation with sheriff's deputies. Let's get right to News Center's Chris Conti, who's live in the newsroom with the latest. It's not the missing golf clubs or even the 11 year old Ford Taurus. It's his brother's ashes he wants back. Let's go to the phone. Sue Hackinson from Pine Island is in Maui now and she joins us live. Hey, Sue, thanks for joining us. They were picked up by authorities in two separate states and they are connected by one gruesome crime that all started over a cell phone in Rochester. And for more, we go to New Center's Jennifer Hoff, who joins us live in our newsroom. Jennifer. Well, Tom, Joe Geike was so badly beaten that he suffered serious brain damage that he's still recovering from today. Now, more than a year later, the two men who allegedly attacked Geike are behind bars. News that this man, Howard Risher, was behind bars Tuesday came as a relief to Olmstead County Sheriff's Deputy Brad Green. Hopefully we're, uh, you know, we'll bring him back to our jurisdiction so that he can have his day in court. Close to a thousand miles from Rochester, police in Newport News, Virginia arrested Risher on a felony warrant issued by Olmstead County nearly two months ago. It was in this Rochester parking lot that Risher allegedly beat up his RCTC football teammate, Joe Geike. The argument started over a cell phone and ended with Geike so severely beaten he had brain damage. Also wanted by Olmstead County for allegedly playing a role that December night in 2008 is Ricardo Thornton. It was just a few days ago that police in Detroit, Michigan confirmed Thornton had been arrested there. We wanted to make the efforts to try to bring these two individuals back so that they can... Uh, so that they can be seen in court on these charges. For police, the arrest of these two men is about following up on a lead. But Joe Geike's former football coach says for Geike's family, it's more about closure. New things are happening. Different things are happening. There's positive things, and that's all we can ask for for him and his family. Coach says the stubborn yet talented defensive back is getting stronger every day. On his website, the proof is in the pictures. He is not a quitter. He is a fighter, and he's going to keep on going. While he still has a long way to go, these two arrests are now the latest piece to Joe Geike's recovery. Now, both those men are awaiting extradition to Minnesota. Howard Risher's extradition hearing is expected as early as tomorrow. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Jennifer Hoff. The four-year-old collie was so covered in burrs and weeds, volunteers had to shear him just to clean him up. Now, the loving, well-mannered pup named Jax needs a new home. He is very sweet and gentle. Despite being 20 pounds underweight yeah. and completely sheared, <laughs> Jax the Collie is in high demand. Everybody wants to adopt him, but of course, you know, only one family will be able to get him. It's okay, honey. Volunteers at the Humane Society of Goodhue County say the four-year-old dog, though, isn't ready for adoption quite yet. He's a good boy. They had to um, take off a mat that was you know, about the size of a basketball. Some two months ago, Jax ran away from his owners. Leash still attached, but with no identification tags, this young pup ended up in one of the most unlikely of places. Rising water and lack of food meant time was running out on Jax's little island, but then came along a couple fishermen. At first they, I think, thought that someone was on the island maybe that was just walking their dog. Calls first started coming into the Goodhue County Sheriff's Office a week ago. Fishermen reporting a dog roaming Trenton Island on the Mississippi near the Red Wing Bridge. It's north, just straight ahead of here and uh, deputies first motorboated to the island in search of the elusive pup. We couldn't locate the dog at all. We walked the whole island. Sergeant Johnson says floodwaters likely forced the dog from the island and that's when a group of fishermen captured the collie clinging to a log. I think the real story is that the, the fishermen were kind enough to stop their fishing and, and uh, maybe get the best catch of the day in the boat. <laughs> Back at the Humane Society, Can I take you home? volunteers are hopeful someone will soon take home this lovable lassie. Good boy. Complete with a new look and quite the story to tell. Good boy, Jax. Good boy. And Jax's previous owners have since contacted that Humane Society and said they are unable to care for the collie who will now be available for adoption, but no earlier than April 5th. There is a link to their website on KTTC.com. Reporting live in the studio tonight, I'm Jennifer Hoff.
When all three of those things did not work, deputies say they were forced to put it down. He looks and he's rubbing his eyes. It, yep, that's a llama. <laughs> a llama on the loose in Waltham knows how to draw a crowd. It's a llama. <laughs> the small town south of Hayfield has few of the shaggy creatures. Two of them are at this hobby farm just west of Waltham. Since last Monday, one has been missing. Neighbors reported seeing the dark brown animal Friday and Saturday evening. We see cattle out or uh, deer on the road or whatever, but to see a llama driving down County Road 1 here in Moore County, it's, it's a little unusual for us. The pregnant female llama wasn't seen again for another two days until deputies corralled her Monday night in a harvested bean farm. Because they don't want it to run. It took five vehicles to try and capture one llama. Yeah. A taser, lasso, and tranquilizer were all unsuccessful in bringing down the nearly 200-pound animal that had been eating farmers' crops and neighbors' flowers and creating a traffic hazard for drivers along County Roads 1 and 16. Monday evening, the animal took off again through a cornfield. When deputies finally found the llama, they decided to put her down. It's a sad situation. I mean, no one wants to see a animal put down without you know, cause or needing to be, but, uh, you know, for the public safety, and it's been out roaming these roads in this area for, you know, past couple of days now. The owners will now take care of the llama once on the loose in Waltham, and now never forgotten amongst the tiny town. The roof collapsed, no doubt, from heavy snow on the former Trico bowling alley in Hampton. Randy, slick roads aren't necessarily a problem tonight, but that uh, dense fog that we mentioned just might be. Democrats are counting down toward a health care vote. It is an election year and time is running out. House Democrats are just a few votes away from passing that health care bill, and both sides say tonight there are no guarantees. Okay, so we uh, mentioned Marlene Polanski's predicament at the top of this newscast. The St. Mary's Hospital trauma nurse was eating dinner at Beatles Friday night. When they left the restaurant around midnight, she saw this. That means Paul Bunyan's ax stays put in Wisconsin. And for more, we bring in New Center Sports, CJ Spang. And I was reading uh, that some fans were really saying the Gophers just kind of beat themselves. So on Facebook uh, earlier, I asked, would you break up with someone today? And listen to some of these responses. Courtney wrote, I would and have. Probably be tough to do both reporting and jumping. <laughs> and at each event, she fired up people on both sides of the political divide. Went out in a spectacular way Friday night. All right, now to an event last year that was so popular, about 400 kids showed up. Louisiana got its earliest snowflakes ever today. Same story also in Texas. I'm just that excited about possibility of seven. Patience is okay. virtue. Good night.